Let's start off this fish profile with the Vieja cichlid. And uh, this is a fish I grew out from a small, small little guy. And uh, he's currently got to be pushing around 10 inches. And often referred to as a Vieja cispillum, cispillum, and Vieja melanora, even though it is going through a bit of a reclassification after some recent uh, DNA uh, evaluations. They can be aggressive, and I found them to be most aggressive with their own kind, even though I've seen them living pretty peacefully in large groups. But uh, this, uh, this fish likes vegetables and some protein in the diet, prefers slow-moving water, and a pH of 6 to 8 and temperature between 70 and 82. You're going to need a big tank for this fish. They can get up to a foot. And so uh, keep that in mind if you're going to be picking one up. Certainly one of my favorites. Love the markings of the body. And even the temperament. This one just kind of lumbers around. Doesn't really bother anybody. Gets challenged from time to time. Like you'll see the uh, Salvini uh, try and assert herself around around this fish but it doesn't really go anywhere and uh, certainly one of one of my favorites this uh, this vieja like most of it of the fish you're gonna see today was picked up from the uh, from the cichlid shack and has really blossomed into into a big beast and still has a little growing to do like I said they can get up to up to a foot they're up. They're locally bred these days, right? But uh, originally they come from Central Central America, and you know from Mexico to Central America is where you'll find this vieja. talk about the uh, the Salvini sometimes referred to as Tabasco or Grijalva I think scientific name for this one is is Trichromus Salvini and you'll find them from Mexico to Honduras considered a Central American cichlid can be very aggressive with its own kind but will calm down will calm down in a tank with bigger fish or with what are called dither fish that'll distract it and likes a pH of 6 to 8, can get up to 6 inches, so will not be the biggest fish in this tank for sure, and likes a temperature between 70 and 82. Actually prefers hard water, is considered a carnivore, and uh, actually I think it's classified as an omnivore, but does prefer and love uh, protein. All the fish in this tank get a diet of, uh, of protein, but also a mix of vegetables is included with their diet. The females have that prominent red belly and you'll see under the right light some blue specks on the top of the body that just make this fish absolutely beautiful. fish that you don't see too often is the chocolate cichlid, also referred to as the emerald cichlid. I'll try and get my uh, my mouth around the scientific uh, Hypsilicara temporalis, and that is the, uh, the official name of this, the scientific name. They are a South American fish that can get as big as 12 inches and uh, can get pretty, pretty beefy, but uh, are considered relatively calm or peaceful overall and they like 76 to 86 degrees in temperature a pH of 5 to 7 they're considered an herbivore and so the vegetables I include in the diet of this tank are important but they will eat protein of course 
They can be found mostly in the uh, slow deep waters of the Amazon basin. So again, a lot of strong water flow uh, you know, and circulation is usually not recommended. When you see them uh, change based on their attitude, they can change their colors. It becomes really, really obvious why they're called an emerald cichlid. talk about the Oscars. I have uh, red tiger Oscars, both a usual red tiger and also an albino red tiger. And this one is scientifically referred to as Astronotus oscillatus. And interestingly enough, can also be found under the, cloud, under the name water dog. And uh, primarily because of just the way they wiggle when they get excited or interact with you. Uh, people do get very, very attached to these fish. They can grow um, all the way up to about uh, 8 to 16 inches in captivity and can last 20 years, lifespan of about 20 years. They can grow up to 12 inches in a year. So you, if you buy one, you really have to have the right size tank or you're going to find yourself having to rehome a fish that you've become very attached to. They're uh, South American, uh, again found in the Amazon basin. And unfortunately, they are susceptible to what is called hole-in-the-head disease. So um, really make sure you're giving them a, um, the right kind of, uh, of diet and, uh, and very clean water conditions. Let's go over to the um, African cichlids. And boy, I could spend all day profiling fish in this tank. But I'm going to concentrate on just a few of them. And it, perhaps in a different video, I'll get back to some other ones that are not included in this, uh, in this fish profile video. But I'm going to start with the obvious giant of this aquarium, and that is the, uh, the Malawi trout, the Champsochromus caruleus. Carulius. <laughs> Boy, I'm probably destroying these scientific names. But this trout that you see there in the very middle, and he'll, he'll work his way this way. There he is. And he, he can get over 13 inches. And uh, this one's got to be pushing, um, I don't know, maybe, maybe 8 to 9 inches right now. Maybe even longer from a uh, nose to tail. They tend to hang out in the middle of Lake Malawi and are uh, what are referred to as pursuit uh, predators. I mean, they, they, they're built for speed and they really just, just overrun uh, fish that can fit in its mouth. Like all of the fish in this tank, he, he likes a pH of 7.5 to 8.5, a hard water fish that is considered aggressive among its own kind, certainly being mostly solitary in Lake Malawi. But really, I have found them to be kind of big and mellow, a lot like the Bucochromis, uh, Nototania, and the uh, Sand Divers. Uh, it just kind of lumbers around and doesn't really get into it with anybody. And uh, they are an open water fish, so you're going to need a tank with not much decor and a lot of swim room. So just keep that in mind. Minimum of six feet across. Of course, this tank is seven feet across and uh, over two feet from front to back. So he's got a lot of room in this 300 gallon. As a pursuit predator, he is going to like a lot of protein in the diet. So keep that in mind, provide him with good high quality protein and you'll end up with a, what is called a centerpiece fish that is just gonna be uh, draw, jaw dropping. Let's talk about a type of fish called Nimbochromus. And in this case, you see a Nimbochromus living stone eye this is an ambush predator, and the Nimbochromas have a very interesting uh, 
habit of being able to blend in with that pattern and they blend in with uh, with patches of Vallis Nirum. Uh, there, there are actually plants in Lake Malawi. Some people say there are not, but there are patches of plants and uh, they, they'll hang out there and uh, they'll, in the case of the living stone eye, will act dead, will lay on its side. Uh, he has a nickname among the people of Malawi, a cal Caligon, which, which is, uh, translates to sleeper where he lays there on his side and the fish come around to check out the dead fish and boom, they're gone. This is the cousin, Nimbochromus venusus, also gets up to about 10 inches and can be anywhere from the shoreline to deep water and does require protein. These fish require protein in the diet. They are considered pescivore. In other words, they eat other fish. You don't need to feed them live fish in your aquarium. Just give them a good quality protein diet, something like extreme, um, you know, extreme's good, north fin, uh, Piscine Jetix. Those are all good, good choices for a high protein diet fish. I do include some vegetables just to keep their digestive tract uh, clean. And I also sometimes will skip a meal just to let them clean out their digestive tract to avoid Malawi bloat. This is the Fusco, which I featured in my last video, and just one of my favorite Lake Malawi fish, and quite possibly my favorite Nimbochromus even though I do like the linny quite a bit, but that's a very hard to get fish. This fish tends to uh, be like the others, goes anywhere from shoreline to deep water. And I just love the markings on the fish from the egg spots on the anal fin to the sort of burnt brown to red that can uh, appear in the body at times. I had one many years ago that had a lot of red in the body and that was just a, a beautiful specimen. Again, it'll get to 10 inches and uh, would be aggressive with other other Fuscos, but I don't really uh, I don't really find that they get into it too much with the cousins, the other Nimbochromuses in the tank. There have been exceptions. I've had Venusas in the past that have been very very aggressive. Nimbochromus fuscoterniatus. <laughs> Let's talk about the uh, the Rostratus a little bit. Uh, this is the sand diver, and as the name of, as the name suggests, they will disappear completely into the sand. And when you're uh, when you're transferring fish or cleaning out or you know transferring a tank, you got to really check with your fingers and make sure that you haven't missed a sand diver that's that's disappeared entirely. They are at lake-wide distribution in Lake Malawi, can get from 11 to as big as 16 inches. So this fish can actually end up being comparable in size to the trout, but of course with a lot more, a lot more girth, a lot more weight and size. Again, prefer 74 to 84 degrees, uh, 7.4 to 8.4 pH, a hard water fish, considered a relatively peaceful omnivore. And, uh, but can be aggressive with his own kind and certainly if in a you know in breeding but i have found them to be just a just a big goofy fish a beautiful fish that just likes to kind of hang out and if you ever go after them with a net you'll see what i mean how fast they can actually get completely buried maybe only have their eye or one fin sticking out of out of the uh out of the sand i actually put a video a video out a while back on him and uh, it was pretty funny how he was disappearing over and over again this is one of the reasons why you need to have good substrate that doesn't have any sharp edges because when they dive in of course they can scrape up their eyes if you have any kind of substrate that has sharp edges this is an oddball fish and uh, and commonly referred to as the Malawi hawk Scientific name Aristochromus Christii. Aristochromus Christii. Aristo because he looks down. So he was aristocratic. <laughs> he is in lake wide distribution, considered mildly aggressive, can get up to 14 inches. And like the other 
fish in this tank like 78 to 84 degrees, 7.4 to 8.4 pH, and is a hard water fish. Kind of an oddball looking fish and will loom over other fish and look sideways. Will actually turn his body so that his eye is pointed down and then will drop on the fish a sort of a death from above attack similar to the eye biter which uses its uh, thin body to sort of disguise itself as it goes directly over a fish and then drops down to ambush him another unusual fish i have in this tank is this malawi gar i like him because he doesn't look like every other fish in the world look at the lips on him and he is built and designed to turn his body sideways and get between rocks to eat a small fry, usually mabuna fry. So he is what you would call a omnivore. He will eat vegetables as well. He can be mildly aggressive, even though I have found this one to be uh, to be just a just kind of a water puppy. They are in lake-wide distribution and can get as big as 14 inches. So again, with all the fish I'm covering here, you're going to need a, a big tank. Except maybe that Salvini, you could probably get away with a 75 gallon. Like the other fish, he likes 74 to 84 degrees Fahrenheit, 7.4 to 8.4 pH in a hard water tank. And I love him just because he's so unusual looking. There are other fish in this tank I'd like to go ahead and talk about, but I don't want to have a, a two-hour video. But certainly the Bucachromuses, the um, you know this this incredible survivor here, this Autopharynx tetrastigma. Several of the fish in here I could do profiles on, but um, so many fish and so little time. <laughs> But that's it for my for my fish uh, profiles. Thank you so much for watching, and why not subscribe? Help to get the channel up over 50,000 subscribers. We're real close. And after doing that and hitting that notification bell, why not watch one of these two videos? All right. Thank you so much, my friends, for tuning in. You are the best, and I will see you again soon. Bye-bye.